If you're a normal Obsidian user who's still using data view queries extensively inside of your Obsidian Vault, chances are you are overcomplicating your PKM system without even realizing it. Because for most users, the new built-in Obsidian Bases core plugin is more than enough to completely replace those complicated data view queries and might just significantly boost the performance of your Obsidian Vault as well. In this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to migrate your data view queries to Obsidian Bases by explaining the different parts of the standard data view query, which Bases features those parts map to, and I'll even share a tool at the end that can instantly convert most data view queries into Bases syntax and even downloadable .base files. But first, we need to address the elephant in the room. Okay, elephant in the room. Let's talk about it. Why might you want to move on from DataView anyway? After all, DataView has long been one of the most popular community plugins for Obsidian and has over 3 million downloads since its initial release back in January of 2021. For years, this powerful plugin has given Obsidian users several new ways to query their notes, including a vaguely SQL looking expression language called DataView Query Language or DQL. This is the most straightforward way to add DataView to your vault, but it's always been a little bit tricky for new users to get the hang of. And with the release of the Basis Core plugin in Obsidian, you can now do a lot of what DataView did faster and more efficiently using this new native core plugin. In addition, the DataView plugin is currently in the process of being replaced by its work in progress successor called Data Core. Now, Data Core has been in development for years at this point, and while the official successor to DataView brings increased performance and interactive views, which are very nice, it also brings a new syntax and additional complexity. All the while, Obsidian Bases continues to get better, and the public Obsidian roadmap lists several features currently in development that will likely eliminate many users' reliance on DataView altogether. So all this to say that now is a great time to see how much you can accomplish using the built-in Basis Core plugin instead. And in this video, I wanna show you how you can update your DataView queries to take advantage of those new Basis features that are now available in Obsidian as of 1.9.10. Now, full disclosure, I was never a real heavy DataView user. I understood the syntax, but it always seemed complicated to me and I never felt great about adding those DataView queries to my notes. So as a result, while I had several data view queries in my Obsidian Vault, I tried to limit the amount that I relied on them. And I have since replaced every single one of those data view queries with Obsidian Bases queries instead. Now I know Obsidian Bases can't do everything that data view can do. So if you are a data view power user, then you may not fully be able to make the switch. But I believe that for most people, Bases provides a better and simpler way to query your notes than a complex community plugin. The main reason you might want to move from data view to bases though is simply the speed. Bases results render nearly instantly, while data view has a tendency to slow down your vault performance, especially on mobile. It's kind of incredible to me how snappy bases are, and since it's a core plugin that ships with the app, if you're new to Obsidian, I'd recommend you start with bases first and then only add data view if you really need it. I'm guessing most people won't, and as a general rule, the less you need to rely on those community plugins, the quicker Obsidian will be and the less bugs you will encounter as a result. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the mechanics of the Bases core plugin because one of the big differences between data view and Bases is the source of the data that is used for the query. While data view can also use metadata properties to power its views like Bases does, it also has the ability to use these inline key value pairs, which are usually denoted with syntax of key colon colon value somewhere inside the contents of your notes. Now, Bases, on the other hand, uses YAML metadata. That is stored in the note properties, and these are most easily accessible when you toggle on the properties view core plugin, and those appear either in the sidebar or at the top of the note. Now, properties have been around for a while, though up until Bases was released, I feel like we really didn't see the whole picture from the Obsidian team about how they envisioned these should be used. They're very similar to the properties in Notion, and they're a very powerful way to add metadata to your notes. Now there are several different types of properties that you can use in Obsidian and I want to very briefly describe those here. So first is text, which is really just any text characters. Next is list, which are multiple text values that are stored on separate lines. Next is number, which requires a numerical input. Next is checkbox, which simply has a true or false state. Next is date, which uses the same year, 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 dash, month, month, dash, day, day formatting as the daily notes. And then there's date and time, which adds additional hour, hour, colon, minute, minute formatting to a date value. 
Now you can tell the type of property by the icon next to the property name in your note. And you can change the property type by clicking on this icon and selecting a new option from that drop-down list. But if you want to use the data that you have stored in your notes currently as inline key value pairs in Obsidian Bases, you will need to convert those to YAML properties first. So if you have something like key colon colon value in the contents of your note, you're going to need to move these to the YAML front matter as key colon space value instead. Now, if you don't want to do all this by hand, there are tools that you can use to move those data view inline key value pairs to the metadata in preparation for the migration to Obsidian bases. I've not actually used these myself, but if I was going to use one, I would use the data view to properties plugin right here. This is the one that's been recommended to me by others who have successfully moved their data view inline key value pairs from their notes to their note properties. There'll be a link to that in the description below this video. But most data view queries are pretty straightforward and they have five different components that make up that query. So let's talk through these before we dive into how to set up these queries in Obsidian Basis. The first thing in a data view query is usually the type of output that you want. And there are four different kinds of output, table, list, task, and calendar. A table includes rows and columns. A list is like a table, but only has that first column. Task shows data view formatted tasks from anywhere inside your Obsidian Vault. And Calendar shows the results on a calendar view based on the date property. Now, before you can do anything else, you must select a query type as this is the only required field for a data view query. Next, you need to define the source by using from. This tells data view where to pull the query from, for example, a particular tag or a specific folder in your Obsidian Vault. Now, after you define the output type and the source, the next piece is the filter, and you apply this by using where. This defines the conditions of the query based on the data inside the notes. So only notes where the value equals true will be displayed in the query here based on the clause that you use. Next, you can define the order of the results by using sort. This determines how the results of the query appear when they're rendered in Obsidian. So for example, in reverse chronological order. And lastly, you can group results together by using group. So here's an example data view query that rolls up all the notes that have the hashtag project tag and are not in the templates folder. Now, once you understand these key components of your data view query, you can then begin to translate these into Obsidian bases a couple of different ways. I'm gonna explain first how to build this from scratch visually, but at the end, I'm gonna share an online tool that can help you convert these a lot faster, though it's still good to know what's going on here so you can do this for yourself if you need to. Okay, so when you are migrating your queries from data view over to Obsidian Bases, the easiest way to recreate these is to do it visually. You can either create a new .base file via the command palette, or you can use three backticks and the word base to create an inline base inside of your current node. Either way, it will create a base, render the results, and show all of the notes that are in your Obsidian Vault then we can start bringing over the data view query components that we described up above. So let's describe how these map one by one. So first, the type of output is set to table by default. You can edit the current view or create a new view by clicking the button in the upper left, but currently the only two views you can choose from are table and cards. Table creates a table that looks very similar to the data view table, and the cards view looks something like this. This cards view comes from my Obsidian Book Notes library, and if you wanna see me walk through setting the whole thing up from scratch, you can check out this video here. But one big advantage here is Obsidian Bases allows you to have multiple views from the same base. So you can actually flip back and forth between these different views. Next, the source, which in data view was defined by using from, is controlled in bases by using the filter button. This is where you can visually build the criteria you want to use to filter the results of your base. When adding these filters, you can use a couple of conditional statements like any of the conditions are true, all of the conditions are true, or none of the conditions are true. For each filter, you can choose the property on the left, the conditional statement in the middle like is, is not, contains, etc., and then the value. You can choose from any of the properties you have in your notes, as well as a bunch of inherited properties like created or modified time. And since you can have multiple views in the same base, you can also apply these filters for all views, or just the current view. So for example, in my Obsidian Book Notes library base, I have a filter for all views, which shows all the notes from the Book Notes folder, and then I have another view stacked on top of that, which has an additional filter that only shows books where the rating is five stars. 
So being able to combine views and filters like this is really powerful. And it's one of the biggest advantages of using Obsidian Bases over Data View, in my opinion. Now, when you're adding filters based on property values, you'll probably want to include those additional property values in either the table or the card views. So to display these, you just have to click on the Properties button and select the properties you want to make visible. You can also edit the labels for any of these displayed properties by clicking the caret and changing the display name. Next, you can change the sort order of the results in your Obsidian Base by clicking the Sort button. You can sort by any of the available properties, and you can even add multiple properties here to apply different levels of sorting for larger queries. Now, if you're following along, you might have noticed the only thing we didn't cover yet is the grouping options from DataView, and that's because you currently can't do anything with these in Obsidian Bases. So this is one area where DataView is still better than Bases, and it also has more views available. Though the public roadmap that is available at obsidian.md slash roadmap does show that list and Kanban views are currently in development, along with grouping options and even a bases API that community plugins can use to extend bases features and add custom views. So all that to say that while it's still early, bases is already good enough to completely replace data view for, I believe, the majority of Obsidian users. So, so far I've walked you through how to manually rebuild your data view queries using the visual nature of Obsidian Bases. But if you want to do this using code, you need to create an inline Bases code block by using the three backticks like I mentioned earlier, make the changes like we've talked about so far, and then you have to click this code button in the upper right of the base to reveal the underlying Bases syntax. But note that you cannot get to this if you're using a .base file. You can only get to this code if you're using a Bases code block. The standard view options like source mode are not available when you are viewing a .base file inside of Obsidian. So you cannot get to the code this way, unfortunately. I actually think the fact that you can edit your base visually like this though, makes it easier to get started with bases. And I think it's a benefit, not a bug. If you wanna dive deeper into the specifics of the syntax though, there is a lot of helpful documentation available at help.obsidian.md slash bases slash syntax, there'll be a link below the video. But maybe you've been watching up until this point, you're still a little confused, that's okay. You can still convert your data view queries to bases syntax easily using a web tool called the data view to bases converter. With this tool, you can paste your existing data view query in the box on the left, get an instantly translated bases syntax version of it on the right, which you can then copy and paste into your Obsidian Vault or download a .base file if you prefer. The new basis code has all of the same settings, sources, and filters as the original data view query, which I think is pretty cool. And if you just want a quick way to convert some of your simple data view queries, this free tool is perfect. If you want to do this yourself, I've linked to it in the description below this video. I did notice that some of my queries were a little more complex than this web tool could handle, but it's worth trying first to see if it can't save you some time. All right, so now that we've talked through how you can convert your data view queries to Obsidian bases, let's walk through a live example here before we go. In the first version of my LifeHQ vault, I had a data view query inside of my contact template that I walked through in my people note video here. Now in that video, I walked through how I use a quick add macro to capture the person's first name, last name, and tag when creating a new people note and the tokens for first name and last name get applied to the Obsidian tasks and data view queries in the person's note. So let's take a look specifically at this meeting notes section, which as you can see has a data view query that shows a table view with the created time in the year, 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 dash month, month, dash day, day format as date, where the filter matches the person's first and last name being linked to in the attendees section. And it's sorted in descending order. So basically what happens is that when this template gets applied as triggered by quick add, the first name I enter replaces the double curly brackets value colon first name, and the person's last name replaces the double curly brackets value last name. This pulls in all meeting notes like this where I have linked to John Smith's note as an attendee. And whenever I add him as an attendee, that note will automatically be rolled up into this query. So if I was gonna update this data view query for bases for this John Smith record, here's how I would do it. First, I'd create a new bases code block and I'd set the filter as all of the following are true where attendees contains a link to John Smith. This would accomplish the same thing as the data view query. Next, I'd add the property of date to the table, resize it so it appears on the right side of the table, which would be the date of the meeting. I could also use created time here too, but I actually like date better just in case I create the notes for those meetings on a different day before the meeting actually takes place. Next, I would rename the date column so the D in date was capitalized, and then I would rename the name column to meeting notes with John. 
And finally, I would sort the table by date from newest to oldest. Now, once I'm done with this, I actually have most of what I need to update the people note template file. By clicking the code button or switching to source mode, I can now see the full basis syntax and I can copy and paste this as a starting point for the template. Now, when I go into the template file, I can paste this into the file and then in the filters section where it has attendees.contains, I can swap out John Smith with the tokens for the first name and last name by using double curly brackets, value colon first name, space, double curly brackets, value colon last name. Then under properties, file.name, display.name, I can change the first name from the text meetings with John and add the token for the first name again. Now when I'm done, I can trigger the people note macro as I walk through setting up in the people note video. And now it takes the first and last name tokens and configures a custom obsidian basis table view instead of a data view query. And if you want all of this inside of a callout, you can select all of this, hit Command P, toggle the block quote on, and add another callout line above this with the callout type that you want to use. So that's how you can convert your data view queries over to Obsidian Bases. And obviously, the specifics of each query are going to be a little bit different, but in general, I would one, try the online data view to bases converter tool first. Then, if you can't quite get it the way you want, second, use the Obsidian Bases interface to live edit and rebuild your data view queries visually. But I do think it's worth bringing things over if for no other reason than it's going to be significantly faster when you're using your Obsidian Vault. Now, Bases is still pretty new, but I am really impressed with it. And I have replaced all of my standard data view queries with Bases queries instead. I even updated all my template files as I walk through in this video. In fact, I have completely updated LifeHQ, my epic done for you Obsidian Vault, which has had full basis support from the very first day that Bases was made available to the public. That was really important to me. You can find out more about LifeHQ by going to lifehq.practilpkm.com. I've also replaced all the data view queries with Bases in my free Obsidian Starter Vault, which has a bunch of additional tips, templates, and resources to help you make more of your notes and ideas in Obsidian. You can download that for free right now if you go to vault.practicalpkm.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in another video.